Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Krita. Why are we talking about Krita? Well, that is because 4.2 was just released today. So what exactly is a Krita, and why are we going to talk about it? Well, first off, Krita is an open source painting application. And to be honest, it has improved massively over the last couple of years. This here you can see in front of you is Krita. I threw together this little painting while I was waiting for this to start. You know, just something I did in my spare time. Obviously, no, this is a Van Gogh, but, and I am not a painter. So I am not going to really be demonstrating this application to you. We are instead here going to focus on what Krita is about and what is new in 4.2. What it's about is, as you can see, it is a painting application. And it's got nice natural media brushes. You've got a number of different options over here. You've got rollers you can work with. I'm, I'm defecating all over this poor Van Gogh here. And that's one of the areas where Krita just improved in this 4.2 release. There are new performance enhancements on the vector brushes. And on top of that, there's a lot more palette control that we will see in a second when we jump into the release notes. Now, the one thing I can say about Krita is in its early days, I think a lot of people, myself included, used it because it was open source and free. These days, people use it because it's good. Now, in terms of what Krita is most like, you immediately think Photoshop, but I would actually say it's more like uh, Fractal Painter or maybe a little bit along the lines of uh, Sketchbook. It is more about that natural painting approach, but you've got a whole lot more functionality in here that wasn't there a couple of years ago. You've got really good font support now, for example, which is one of those areas where a lot of these programs really struggle. Um, you've got animation support in here now, and like I said, this is a project that's gaining a whole lot of steam. So with each new release, Krita is in improving a ton. And as you can see also here, the performance is very good. We don't have any of the Inkscape problems here. You can zoom in and out. You can come into like a fat pixel grid. The nice thing for pixel artists too, is you can work in a um, fixed set palette for natural media artists. You can limit to a subset of palette. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool. There are a number of brushes out of the box and the interface itself has improved massively over time. So if you have not checked out Krita already, I highly recommend you do so. So now let's jump into some of the details about Krita. First off, Krita is available at krita.org. Uh, it's completely free. It's about 100 to 150 megabyte download depending on your platform. On the topic of platforms, it is available on uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So pretty much every relevant operating system has a version of Krita available for it. And what we're talking about today specifically is Krita 4.2. So what is new here? Well, there is a bunch of things. At the top, we've got a whole lot of bug fixes. Between 1,000 and 1,500 bugs were squashed in this release. I guess that's a bit of a double-edged sword that there were so many bugs to fix, but it's great that they are fixed. That means if you are a daily Krita user, your life should just get a lot smoother now because of these improvements. On top of that, we have a whole lot of top-level supports. Things like supports for drawing tablets have improved. So if you're using a Wacom tablet on different platforms, they've got to standardize the API. So going forward, it should be easier to support them and it should perform better today. On top of that, HDR support, or um, I don't remember what HDR stands for, high definition range. Basically, it enables you to have uh, a better gamut of colors. You're, in HDR, your black is black, and you can have brighter brights. And this is the first painting application that enables you to actually work in HDR. Unfortunately, it requires hardware support, and that hardware is currently only supported on Windows. So Mac and Linux users are left out on the HDR painting thing for now uh, until the HDR monitor support comes to those platforms as well. But if you have an HDR monitor, this is the only way to actually paint in HDR today. On top of that, we've got improvements to the color palette docker, scripting API improvements for animation, color gamut masking, improved selection handling, and so on. We're going to look at a couple of those things in more detail, but again, I am not a daily user of Krita. It's a program that I basically reinstall once they've got every new version comes up. I don't do a lot of natural painting, or when I do, a lot of times I'm working for real world sources using clone brush and such for texture work. So Krita isn't really an application that I have a whole lot of experience with. Now, the cool thing is, in the release notes, which I will link to, so you can check this out on your own. A uh, friend of our channel, uh, Nathan over at GD Quest, has actually done the official what's new in 4.2 as a step-by-step 20-minute -step video demonstrating each of the new major features in action. So if you wanna see things in more detail, do check out this video available here. But we will jump now into the release notes and at least quickly look at what the highlighted features are. Now, we already talked about the updated tablet support for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So if you are using a tablet, life should get a little bit better for you. 
Uh, we already discussed the HDR painting, but of course there are hardware requirements, so that is limited to one platform. Uh, we've got improvements to the brush speed with vectorization and lock-free programming. Now the cool thing here is you're seeing the results of Google Summer of Code, which just was launched for 2019 a month or so back. Uh, a bunch of these things are going to be coming out from previous year's Summer of Code implementations. This is a program for summer students to get experience in the real world by doing projects for open source projects. And these are the results of one of them. So here you can see uh, we've got performance improvements from these new implementations in the uh, vectorization of uh, or the drawing of vectors. Uh, we've got the improvements to the color palette docker. There were actually a lot of palette related improvements in this uh, here. So you see here we've got um, Instead of an empty or an entry-based Docker, rows and column-based Docker, it can uh, hold empty entries, which is useful for organizing stable drag and drop of colors, easily adding in entries by clicking them in the Docker, right-clicking removes an entry, palettes can be put into the KRA file, and you can press a folder icon to open palette editing dialog where you can set a palette to be stored in the document or resource folder. Another cool thing is you can actually add groups and start dragging and dropping from the palette into your group. So if you had like a special set of gray tones, you could create a gray tone group, group drag the gray tones into it, and then have just that palette available when you scroll down here. Uh, we've got, again, the animation Python API um, improvements. You can now configure backups um, to how you can control how Krita does backing up. You can have it do it automatically. Options to control how backups are done. You can even control if you want your backups to be stored in a different location. These settings are found in the configure Krita main menu under the general settings. Color gamut masking, news about Krita, an improved artistic color selector, including uh, down to just quadrants available. Undo operations with move tool. Uh, which is actually kind of nice. So now you've got multiple undos when you move things around so you can uh, you know, fix your mistakes quite easily. Uh, easily move, rotate, or transform the selection by itself. You can even edit the anchor points uh, with how the selection is made to do things like rounding corners. Improved display of memory usage, overview docker improvements, resize layer thumbnails, multi brush improvements, painting mass performance improvements, improvements to selecting opaque, sharpness changes, flow opacity changes, clone brush, reset origin, a simplex noise generator, and new blend modes. And then on top of that, we have uh, several other bugs and fixes that just kind of go on for miles and miles and miles. So if you are a Krita user, it's a no brainer. Just upgrade now. The performance and stability improvements alone are reason enough. If you haven't checked up Krita yet and you are looking for an open source painting application, it is an excellent tool. And if you are using Krita, let me know what you think of this uh, release down in the comments below. And if you aren't using Krita, what are you using for digital painting? All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.